Hi friends, welcome back or welcome. If you're new here, my name is Mali, and today we're gonna go through my end of year TBR. I can't believe that it's only about four months until the year is over. I feel like the year has gone by so quickly, and despite me reading some 50-ish books this year, I still have so many that I want to go through before the year is over. I'm gonna try to lift up the stack because it looks ridiculous. There's literally 15 books here. This is a quick overview of all the books we're gonna be talking about in this video. Again, there are 15 books here and I really want to get through these. It's gonna be a little tricky, I'm sure, because I am a mood reader, but there are a few books here that I just have to read this year and if I don't, I have to get rid of them because they have literally been on my TBR for two and a half years and it's stupid. It's really stupid. So yeah, we're going to go through this back really quickly and talk about books I want to read. The very first book that I want to talk about with you guys is Martyr by Kave Akbar. I am not going to lie, I mainly bought this because of its stunning yellow cover. And by what I understand is that we follow this young guy who is struggling with addiction. He hears about an artist in Brooklyn who's spending her last couple of days at this museum she was diagnosed with cancer and she's writing it out in a museum and talking to anybody who wants to talk to her and so our main character decides that he would really like her company and so he goes over and i don't know if he's gonna stay with her until she dies or if they're gonna become something else i don't know if there's gonna be a tinge of romance in this but i'm really really intrigued by this and honestly Every summary of this book summarizes something completely different, but from what I can tell, this is a beautiful book about mortality and I'm excited to read it. This is a book that I'm terrified of adding and that is The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. And why is it here if I'm terrified? And that is because I need to grow up and I need to stop being scared of big books. Look at this guys this is a huge book oh my god there's 587 pages of this this is going to be a journey to get through but i do think that this book is absolutely perfect the second half of the year this is a university campus novel where there is a murderer on the loose our main character is part of this close-knit group of guy friends and our mc is particularly interested in this one boy who seems to be hiding something i think there's a little bit of queer desire in this one and i saw just one review who compared this to the secret history and that was enough for me i added it to my tbr so fast i also just have to read freak eston super prolific he is the author of american psycho and we all know or seen the movie at least i've seen the movie my next book is a teeny tiny thing and that is only alive on sundays by kim rashidi i honestly feel so bad that i haven't gone into this book yet because the author actually reached out to me when i was in new york last year and she sent it to me in New York. How sweet is that? And let me tell you guys, it was so cool to have the front desk ring me up and tell me there was a package for me. I literally felt like a celebrity. Only Alive on Sunday is about this young girl who's trying to figure herself out. At the same time, she's getting to know these two guys. And I think she has to choose between the both of them. It sounds tender. It sounds a little bit heartbreaking. Short little thing as well. So I'm really attracted to it because of it. A really cool fact about this novel is that the author wrote it using tarot cards. I'm guessing she drew inspiration from certain cards in her writing process. I really want to get through this one soon. Oh my god! I, I forgot that this was signed! How cute. I really do need to read this book soon. I need to start it on a Sunday as well, just to match the title. If you are from Latino household, chances that you read this, or your mom has read this, or even your grandma has read this, are incredibly high, and that is La Casa de los Espíritus by Isabel Allende. This is translated in English to The House of Spirits. This is Isabel Allende's magnum opus, and somehow I evaded it. I know I was supposed to read this during high school, but then I just never did. I was stupid and dumb. This just sounds right up my alley because the only thing I know and the only thing I want to know is that this is a family saga. There's Michael 
realism elements in this and it sounds like a good time and so i just have to read this one especially in spanish because i really want to read more books in spanish before the year is over and yeah if it's 2025 and i haven't read this one please call me out in the comments because if i don't read this i'm gonna be mad at myself also this cover gorgeous another latin classic that everybody in the world has read but me is Gabriel Garcia Marquez 100 years of solitude I got the penguin modern classics edition because I think it's gorgeous and you guys know that I'm recently obsessed with this editions in particular this is yet another book that I evaded during my high school year and I'm kicking myself for because I could have had this one under my belt this is yet again another family saga it has my realism elements Latinos love microrealisms and that's fine with me. I am reading this one in English though instead of Spanish because I just heard this book is kind of confusing. I know that there's tons of characters. I don't know. It just feels more intimidating in my mother tongue for some reason. So I'm going to ease into this one in English and maybe in the future if I want to reread this one, I can read it in Spanish. I'm both super excited and scared to start this. I also have the unwritten book by samantha hunt is a book that i have been searching for months and i finally found it earlier this year at books are magic in new york city and the reason why i was searching high and low for this one is because this is only a few of samantha hunt's published books and if you don't know samantha hunt published disease which is my absolute favorite book of all time i read that one last year and i adored that one the unwritten book is very different to the seas this is actually non-fiction and it's an investigation into our relationship with the dead i honestly have no idea what to expect from this one and i'm hoping to have a really good time with this I'm excited to read more samantha hunt i also have her short story collection in my tbr that i like to get through this year but this one is just called Calling my name so I just really want to get to this one as soon as possible that girls by Selva Almada this is translated from Spanish it deals with femicide in Argentina this is a piece of journalistic fiction as Almada narrates the cases of three particular girls who were killed back in the 80s their cases went unsolved no doubt due to police negligence this sounds like a book that will piss me off but this is a sort of book that just has to be read even if it is a hard topic to swallow a short little thing as well and it's published by charco press which is a publishing house that i really really admire and i love what they do so i'm really happy that this is part of my collection normal woman by ainsley Hogarth. this book came into my radar after i read and loved mother thing by the same author unfortunately this book doesn't seem to live up to the hype as his successor did this has such incredibly low ratings but i want to find out for myself why that is and if the hate is deserved or not in normal woman there is a pyramid scheme and i think someone goes missing I'm not entirely sure, but I did see the words female rage tacked into the marketing for this. Also, I absolutely adore the cover of this one. I'm hoping that I enjoy this one and that everyone else is wrong or that I'm a weirdo and that I like this incredibly bad book. Kaming Chang's latest, I have absolutely no clue what this book's about and I want it to stay that way. But if there's anything I've learned with Kaming Chang after reading all of her work is that she loves to explore queer relationships in a surreal type of way. I know there's going to be beautiful writing and aching descriptions of queer love and desire and it will be a good time. Will her heavy use of microrealism confuse me? Yes. But will I come out the other side of it and declare Kim In Chang a genius? yes i will i started this one when i was in france and that is perfume by patrick suskind i only got through about 20 pages of it or so before dropping it not for any particular reason when i travel i don't chill enough because <laughs> i'm like i have to see all the sites i have to go everywhere and so i was actually really busy and i didn't have that much time to sit down and read and when i did i was sort of distracted because i was just in a, in a whole new place 
and I just prefer to like people watch or something but I put it down knowing that when I came home I really did want to sit down with this one and properly read it this is about a guy who's obsessed with perfumes and eventually he has the idea to kill this young girl because he wants her to be a smell and I think the reason why is because she's a virgin she's a young girl it sounds so eerie and grim it sounds perfect for autumn so i'm really excited to read it then i also think that i will be a little bit nostalgic for my time in france when i read this one okay i have cursed red by sophie mackintosh this cover gives me huge midsummer vibe all i know is that a young village girl becomes obsessed with the baker's wife he develops a crush for her all the while strange things are happening across the village it's been said to be a fever dream of a novel and i love when things are described that way also i know that she comes highly recommended by almost everyone who reads her so i'm really excited to read some Sophie McIntosh. Margaret and the Mystery of the Missing Body is a queer coming of age novel. I would suggest brushing up trigger warnings for this one because I know that this deals with an eating disorder that eventually lands our main character into a recovery center. This gives very much early 90s, teenage hood, girlhood. There's an all girl detective mystery club and it's supposed to be a little weird. I've been eyeing this one on my shelf for the longest time and it's about time that I read it. Pew by Katherine Lacey. I read the first page of this book at a bookstore and I was instantly hooked. Catherine Lacey is also a very, very skilled writer whose works I previously adored. So I won't be surprised if this ends up being a five star for me. The setting is the American South and this mysterious person has showed up. They refuse to speak and so nobody knows this person's origins or any basic info about them. They agree to shelter him and so they spend their time going from house to house. All the meanwhile, the person is leaving uncertainty behind them. I am hooked and I wanna read this very, very soon. I love Catherine Lacey. I'm gonna show you guys the last two books on my TBR and both of these books are TBR veterans. I'm giving myself an ultimatum. I have to read these books by the end of the year. If I don't, I need to get rid of them because there is no way they're going to string these books along for another year. Those two books are Night Bitch and A Certain Hunger. I know that everybody in the world has read these two books but me and I need to fix that. These two are books that I think are perfect for Autumn as well so I'm definitely hoping no. I will be picking these up this autumn season. Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder is about a woman who turns into a dog. It's supposed to be a giant allegory for motherhood and I love a book about motherhood and exploration of motherhood. Because of that, I'm not sure why I haven't picked this up yet, but if I don't pick it up this year, I am getting rid of it. A Certain Hunger by Chelsea Summers. This is about a foodie who develops a palate for human flesh. She's telling her tale from prison and it sounds insane. Another book that I've just been really scared to pick up, I think this will either be a book that I love or that I hate. I'm not sure which one it is. I have to read it to find out. And that was the very last book that I want to read before the year is over. Like I said countless times, I'm super excited for all of these books. I'm honestly panicking a little bit because there is only so many weeks left of the year, but I think that if I do a good reading plan, I can read these before the end of the year. I just hope that my mood reading self allows me to. And I hope you guys stick around if it's the first time you're watching me. And if you're back, then hi. I love you. I'll see you guys in the very next one. If I talked about any book that you love, please let me know so that I can prioritize it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Love you.